Hi, my name is Rubidium. DaVinci Resolve is a, probably the most commonly used um, color grading tool uh, for independent cinema. Um, Resolve Studio has a couple of features that Resolve, the basic version, doesn't. And some of them um, are extremely useful. Probably the biggest one is enabling the GPU acceleration of your computer to render and uh, preview video. The one that I think is the second most useful is an open effects plugin that comes with um, DaVinci Resolve Studio called the Face Refinement Tool. Because a lot of your color grading um, in narrative and documentary filmmaking involves the face, involves separating the face from the background, making faces look good, compensating for maybe bad lighting or non-existent lighting, the face refinement tool does a lot of things automatically that experienced colorists have learned to do um, over time. So it really puts the tools into your hand of a much more advanced um, colorist and lets you separate out uh, your subject from the background and do all kinds of amazing tricks like light their eyes or change their makeup or change the lighting on their face. So today we're going to look at the face refinement tool and how you can use it to make your videos and films look a lot better. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve Studio. Um, this is 16, the public beta. 16 actually has a little bit better tracking than 15 and so far the face refinement has been pretty stable. So uh, this is what I'm going to show. I've got a clip from a short film I did. And as you can see, I have a couple of nodes here. Um, this is my sequential node graph. We have contrast, we have sharpening, we have a vignette. And this lastly is my Crimson Engine lookup table, which is what's giving it the color and bringing it out of um, C-Log2, shown on the Canon C200 in RAW, and into a Rec. 709 um, color space. So probably the best place to put our face refinement node is after all these things have been done, but before the LUTs applied. That means that it'll be affecting um, the raw image rather than the post Rec. 709 image. I'm gonna have my node here. I'm gonna open up effects and I can just search for face refinement, drag it onto that node. The first thing I'm gonna do is find a place where two eyes, a nose and a mouth are clearly visible. And I'm gonna hit analyze. Resolve is going to find the face and track it through the scene. And once it gets to the scene, it'll go back to where we started and track backwards from that space to the start of the um, shot. This is important so that all the things that we do um, in the face refinement are going to show up throughout the whole um, shot, no matter where he moves his face. What's important is that the face itself is tracked through. And you see here we get a little bit of an odd tracking where it sort of forgets where the face is. So I'm going to hit analyze again. Now that it's found the face, it's doing a much better job of working out where it is. The actor Patrick has his mask on for the whole thing. I can take the overlay off, um, but by showing mask, it's basically telling me where that mask is. I can increase the softness a little bit. I can always increase or decrease the size. But really, it's what's be going to be affected by this um, mask. Now, you could do this um, with just the skin, but for reasons that are going to become clear soon, um, the face refinement is a much more powerful tool. So I usually leave this on Beauty Automatic. Um, it has all the controls you need without being overly complicated. And the first thing you're going to use is texture. So if I move this up, you can see straight away, it's starting to smooth out the texture of your skin. If I move this down, it's starting to make him look older and more haggard. But critically, unlike using that on any of the other, on a different node, it's gonna do it just on this area of his face. So let's add a little bit of smoothing, kind of like a beauty pass. And then I can just hit Command D backwards and forwards to turn the entire node off. Then, I'm going to add a little bit of contrast that's going to make the bright of his face brighter and the darker of his face darker i can use mid-tone to turn it up and down but usually i leave that alone um, i can use color boost to increase the saturation just on his face um, and like a lot of these things it's super sensitive so you know even even 0.1 
is a lot of color. So let's select 0.6. If his face is too purple or green, I can use this tent slider to, to make it more um, color accurate. And desaturate the shadows. Um, and I can also remove shine, which can be super interesting, especially for um, someone with Patrick's uh, condition. You know, you can, if you, you don't light it properly, you can get a really hard hotspot on the head. So in this case, I'm able to, if I wanted to take that out altogether, but what I'll do is put it on um, 0 0.5 and just kind of tame it a little. Again, I'm gonna able to hit Command D on my Mac to sort of tab this on and off. Now, the next interesting thing with the face refinement is that I'm able to affect the eyes. Now, if you were doing this with um, with a skin qualifier, you're not able to, you're able to do the skin, but because the eyes are different colors, it's much harder. Because this is tracking the entire face, it's able to do all kinds of interesting things. Um, brightening is always a really good idea. Gets that, the eye there. The eye light affects the entire eye area, as you can see, sort of like sunglasses. And it's great for deep set eyes that you have trouble getting light into. Um, and then eye bag removal puts diffusion and softness on that under eye area, which can be, you know, awesome for a beauty pass. Sharpening a little goes a long way, right? He starts looking uh, like you've done a totally eye replacement very quickly. But I, I personally find brightening really helpful. And that eye bag removal is up too high. So again, we're just going to A, B very subtly and see that before his face obviously grabs attention. It's a well-lit, well-graded shot. But after the face refinement, um, suddenly it really jumps out at you. You also do a lot here, which is more of a beauty thing, um, which we'll get to in the next clip, where you can change the lip color, the hue, the blush. Um, and right down the bottom here, they have a global blend. So like Photoshop, you almost always go a little too far on your first pass. So you're able to dial down the node from zero to one or from one to zero to one. So we can start at one and then just bring in what we've done just to give it um, that little extra clip. Let's go to our next clip, which is more of a beauty pass of this dancer, Stephanie Kim walking towards the camera. Find a good place. Um, by clicking this little circle here, uh, I'm able to just keep that one clip playing through again and again. Here's my um, node that I'm going to put my face refinement on. Again, I'm going to find something where two eyes, a nose, and a mouth are really clean and obvious and hit analyze, and the computer picks it up straight away, tracks forward, goes back to the start, tracks backwards. Even with her hand moving around on her face, it's pretty clear. So come back to our keyframe somewhere here. We'll turn off our overlay and now you can see Beauty Automatic. Let's add a little bit of smoothing. Take that contrast out of her skin. Put contrast back into the whole face to make it a little more, more punchy. Um, maybe add a little bit more saturation. And again, leave sharpening alone with the eyes, but you know, I'm able to add you know, a 0.2 of brightness and 0 0.08 of lightness. It's taken out of the, the kind of imperfections on his skin and just made a really beautiful um, effect. So this is where I can, you know, give her lipstick or take lipstick away. I can smooth the upper lip, not that she needs it. If I put my saturation all the way up, I can, you know, change the color. These aren't perfect. You know, the computer's making its best guesses. That would be a really tough shot to track otherwise. Um, there might be too much on the eyes there. They've kind of lost their dimension. It's not the eye light, it's the eye brightening. Sharpening almost always looks terrible. Um, but I think just a little brightening is great. It's just for me, giving it so much, directing the eyes so much more to um, where we want the viewer to look. And the real coup of this program is that it does so without you needing to be a very good um, colorist without having to know Da Vinci that well. It really is, it does a lot of the heavy lifting for you. So that's the face refinement tool in DaVinci Resolve Studio. You have to do the $299 upgrade, um, either in the Mac store or to get a dongle to get face refinement. So you won't find this um, in the basic free version. But as we covered, it's incredibly useful for a lot of applications. And since faces are a thing that 
you're always really um, working with in color grading. Uh, it just makes your uh, color workflow a lot quicker, a lot easier, um, and a lot more professional. Thanks very much for watching. I will see you next time.